Uh, your previous album, the Black and White album. What do you hear on this album? I hear a band. Uh, it's sort of two-sided. It's black and white. Like it's part of it is is a very confident band doing their thing and really sort of honing in on what what they uh, know and and uh, and just I, some of it's just like some of it's the, some of the best rock music I've ever heard. And on the other hand, it's also a band experimenting a lot uh, with different styles and di other instruments and stuff. And that was really, that part of the album is really what drove us forward and meant that we could continue going as a band because we had an initial plan to just make three albums. And then we'd done those three, and the Black and White album was the fourth. So it meant that we had to sort of figure out a way forward. That was the most important thing of that album. Uh, you were saying the initial plan was only three albums? Why? How come? Because we never thought any band was good beyond their third album. That was when it ended for us. Like it was never. Plus, the first three albums always had sort of a cool, you know, the first debut album, then the second album that's sort of the debut album but not quite as good, and then the third one that's supposed to be the greatest one. But we didn't feel like we'd made our greatest album yet, so we wanted to keep going. Okay. Um... If you compare this album then to the previous one, you were saying uh, it was rock and experimenting. Um, what did you drive on, on the previous album, and that you took onto this album? What we uh, took with us? Yeah. Well, you take with you everything you know, everything you learn. It's, uh, it's not like we just decide to, to play a certain type of music. We just kind of... The Hives is as much as it's a band with the five members, it's also an idea, and it's an ideal, and it's uh, you know something that feels like it would almost exist even if the five band members didn't exist. It's sort of bigger than us, and we have an obligation to to that ideal and to that idea to to follow those rules, pretty much. Then maybe Randy is the boss of uh, of the Hives. Yeah, he is. If he says something, we'll follow, but a lot of times he doesn't say that much. Okay. What did he say for this album? He said a lot of things, and they're all trade secrets. Okay. Um, you've, it's been five years since your previous album. Um, how come it took you five years? What did you do? Uh, mostly we toured a bunch. We toured a lot, and uh, that, the Black and White album did really well in new parts of the world that we had to tour. And then it takes us a long time, seeing as we did everything ourselves on this album, like, you know, from building the studio to producing to engineer, like, we didn't engineer it, but apart from that, we did pretty much everything ourselves. And that, you know, it, at first we had to learn how to produce, and then we had to produce. But why did you make this, this decision to do everything yourself? Uh, you know, because we always want to kind of take we always want to do a little bit of the opposite of what we did on the last album. And on the last album, the Black and Bottom was the first time we had producers that produced, sort of, that sort of were, you know, interested in the tempo of our songs or interested in uh, the arrangements and stuff like that. And, and uh, I guess we, we figured that on this, this time then we'll do the exact opposite and just be the five of us in a room playing music together again. Okay. Um, but the album is called Lex Hives. Yeah. Um, who came up with the name? It's not important. The Hives came up with it. And what, is, what does it mean, the name? It means uh, the law of the Hives. And the law of the Hives is, is uh, when we form, first formed the band in you know, 93 or whatever, long, long time ago, 20 years ago, we had a lot of ideas about we didn't know how to form a band. We didn't know how to make, you know, make music or be a band. So basically, we would listen to things and go, you know, what's bad about this? Oh, it's this drum beat is bad. Okay, we can't use that drum beat, and we just let, write everything down on a list. And you can't use uh, this or that effect, or you can't use. Uh, it was basically just taking things out until the only thing that was left in the band was what we loved and what we could stand for, and. And those are Lex Hives, that's the law of the Hives, those rules that we adhere to. And this album 
since we did it all ourselves and wanted to make it as hyped as possible, it's a celebration of that idea, I guess. Okay. Well, last question. Uh, well, the single is Go Right Ahead. Uh, it features well, a songwriting credit to Jeff Lynn. Yep. Um, when did you find this out? Did you do it pur on purpose? No, we, we figured out, I mean, we've heard the song, uh, but probably a long time ago, and, and we, we wrote Go Right Ahead and we're really happy with it. And then like six months later, we're like, wait a minute. And then we check out, like, doesn't this, okay. And then we figured out it sounded a lot like the LL song and we contacted Jeff Lynn and asked if he wanted some, some of the publishing basically, because it sounds a lot like his song, but it was totally not on purpose. And it just turned out that way. If we would have done it on purpose, we'd probably done it differently, maybe. But the song was finished when we realized that it sounded more like. Uh, what was his reaction to the song? Do you know? Well, he liked it, but he also wanted to cut out the publishing. He did the same th thing with a song he did called Showdown, that where he ripped off the verse from uh, "Heard It Through the Grapevine," okay. and he had to pay Motown, you know, songwriting publishing. Okay. Um. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah.